Trying to figure out what materials right for your project can be even more confusing than that time I ate that special gummy candy and mowed my lawn for 30 minutes with the blade turned off. But in this video, I'm going to break down the good and bad of hardwoods versus MDF for radiator covers and hopefully make it easier for you to choose. Along the way, I'll show you how I made these radiator covers and sold them for $300 a pop and how you can do it too. A few weeks back, I was contacted by a friend of mine to see if I could make him some radiator covers for his house. My first thought was, they make those out of wood? But a quick text response from my friend confirmed that yes, they do indeed make them out of wood. So of course, with zero knowledge of the subject, I took the job. And just like you, I jumped onto the internet to see what kind of information I could find. But when YouTube left me with little to no information, I realized I was going to have to read. And to save you from the daunting task of using your brain, I have broken down some of the information I found to help you decide as well. My original thought for these covers was plywood, but then I decided that the heat spikes of the radiator may cause the plies to separate over time. Not to mention I didn't want to have to cover up the edges of the plywood. With plywood out, my next thought was three quarter inch pine. But the more I looked into that, the more I saw that pine has a tendency to crack from the heat. So with those options gone, my only other choices were hardwoods like maple or white oak or MDF. MDF is a dense synthetic composite with a perfectly smooth surface which is great for paint. And according to my research, it's more stable when subjected to the radiator heat spikes. Ow. Not to mention, it's significantly cheaper than even plywood so you know it's cheaper than hardwood. But on the other hand, the hardwood would give you a much more stable product in the end. But with these radiator covers, I knew they wouldn't be getting touched much. They're just going to cover the radiators and be decorative. Ooh, la, la. Also, I knew they wanted me to paint them. So it seems silly to me to spend the money on hardwood just to paint it white. So even though I've never used MDF for a single project in my life, this seemed like a better option for me for this project. Now let's see how I made it. The first step to any project that's built for a specific spot is transferring the measurements onto your material. These measurements were going to need to be pretty precise because there were a lot of obstacles involved in this like molding, window sills, and pipes. So I used my track saw to cut this sheet good down to a manageable size that I could then later cut on my table saw. Now I used a track saw for this, but you could easily get this done with a straight edge like the factory edge of a sheet of plywood and a circular saw. Listen guys, safety is no joke. Don't look around for safety glasses while you're mid-cut on a table saw. And then walk away from the running table saw with your wood halfway through it to get those glasses? What an idiot. But hey, at least I'm wearing a mask. Kinda. Okay, back at it. Once I had all my boards ripped to their final width, 5.5 inches, I could move to cross-cutting them. I had to plan strategically to get the most out of this sheet of MDF. I knew I needed 8 boards cut at 5.5 by 24, 2 boards cut at 5.5 by 57, and 2 cut at 5.5 by 31. And that was just for the two radiator covers. So drawing out all your cuts on your sheet good before you make them so you know you're wasting the least amount of wood possible is always a good plan. Once I had everything cut, I laid it all out on my picnic table and labeled all the pieces. I'm going to be making three different covers, so mixing any of these pieces in with each other by accident could really mess things up later. I had measured and planned for the molding and this weird box that housed some pipes on the side of one of the radiators. So I made some quick cuts to accommodate them using a combination of my table saw, miter saw, Japanese pole saw, and my bandsaw. To make sure the cutout for the molding matched on all of the different spots I would need it to, I cut out one piece and made sure it was a good template that I could trace onto all the other ones. Now all my cuts were done and I could start gluing and screwing everything together. For this project I decided to use my Craig Jig. For anyone who doesn't know, Craig Jigs can help you drill pocket holes as you can see right here and then allows you to slide a screw inside of the pocket hole and screw it in at an angle securing the front and the sides together. I will say this is one of the things about the MDF that had me a little worried. MDF is much easier to pull screws out of 
but these screws went in easy and seemed to stay in very tight. Also, I knew I'd be screwing a solid piece of wood to the top of these covers, which will help secure the whole thing and keep it all nice and tight. All right, as you can see right there, you're starting to get an idea of how these are gonna work. I gave them all their first of three coats of paint, which I lightly sanded in between. After that, I could make these tops, and the tops are just two by tens cut to size. I know I said I wasn't gonna use pine because I thought it would crack, but this is two by material, and I feel like there's much less chance of this cracking than a three quarter inch piece of pine that I would have to use for the front and the sides. I used my new drum sander just for funsies, and then I routed the two sides and the front of these tops for a more finished look. I grabbed this clover pattern decorative metal grate from Home Depot, and this was the biggest cost. Not cheap at all. I cut this metal like a psycho, don't do this. Use some metal cutting shears and stay safe, people. Then I just stapled them onto the back of these radiator covers and used my Craig jig to attach the tops. I sold these for $300 each, and from the prices I'm seeing online, I could have gotten even more. If you like making money and want to try something new that's not hard at all, give this project a try. Or try this super easy project that I made from one palette that always seems to sell on Facebook Marketplace. Thanks guys, see you in the next one later. Bye, see you again, and have a good dream.